Hey, folks. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. My name is Charlie of Barons, and I am here with my co-host, Miles of Mon Plaisir. Charlie, you got to start calling me Miles you bet you guy. That's my stage name. I, but I love saying Mon Plaisir. You know, I know you, did, you didn't, weren't creative enough to come up with your own stage name, so. Man to walk minute, dude. The man to walk went minute, dude. I said man to walk minute, comma, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So what now, Miles? I know. So what would you, but what's your stage name? Miles, quit, quit like uh, trying to, you know, make me seem lesser than you. I was the one who showed up on time today. Okay, I knew he was going to do this. Meanwhile, you were again late. Sorry, I was working this morning. I wasn't uh, sleeping in like you. You know what? I was getting my body healthy, Miles. Yeah, you sound a little uh, plugged up today. Yeah, well, you know, when you grind as hard as I do, day in, day out, take no days off, you know, sometimes the body starts pushing back against you, and you just got to tell the body no. Well, maybe that's a life lesson, Charlie. Maybe you need to take a few days off. Oh, you think so? Yeah. No rest for the wicked, Miles. Maybe yeah. a little bit more hustle. Yeah. That's what you need in your life. Over and over, Charlie, you're going to, then all of a sudden, you're going to wake up. You're going to, don't blink. You're going to wake don't up. Blink. You're going to be 70 years old, and you're going to be, your body's going to be broken down because you never took any days off. I'm stretching. Stretching every day, meditating. What kind of day. stretching regimen are you on? Well, thanks for asking, Miles. I wake up and I do some cat cows, get the lower back moving and grooving. Mm -hmm. I wag the tail a little bit. I get in downward dog and I stretch the side. Lower so basically, back. you just wake up in the morning and you just act like an animal. Yeah. Quite literally, cat, cow, downward Miles. dog. Yeah, it's rough. Um, so Miles, we it's rough. We, <laughs> so what's going on, man? Um, Christmas is coming up, right? To get well, all your hold presents. on. First of all, I want to talk about. So right now they got the Chive TV <sighs> on in the re, in oh, the bar no. here. Why? First of all, we are here at the Hill Bar and Grill. Why in, well, in Glendon, Minnesota? Yeah. Uh, why the Hill Bar why, and Grill? Uh, the Hill Bar and Grill. Why did you tell me Chive TV was on? Well, so. Ooh, mountain biking. It's kind of funny because you will have sports games on at a bar. Yeah. But if Chive TV is on, that's what everyone watches. Oh, yeah. Because it's just literally like watching like TikTok. It's addicting to look at. Um, but also, what a move by Chive. Do you remember when the Chive came out and all the guys had the stickers on the backs of their cars and the T-shirt says, keep calm and Chive on? Yeah. You remember that? Craze? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a craze. It's a weird thing. And who would have think like in the time they did, nobody was like saying, oh, you know what we should do? TV. But they they and pretty much here they are. I don't know. Are they crushing it? Are they doing good? Or are they like on the brink? Is this no, all they have? I don't know. But it's on at every bar now. I feel like if, yeah, it's what keeps people sitting at the bar. Exactly. Um, yeah. But. Were you ever, did you ever have any keep calm or chive on merchandise? No, I didn't. I didn't either, but my brother was a big chiver. Miles, when do you think we're going to start turning our TVs the other way? Oh, like, like a vertical, like your yeah. phone. Yeah. I mean, pretty soon. Gotta be right. Yeah. I, I was doing. I never thought about that before. Is kinda, that the next progression? Do I come think. out with vertical TVs. Probably. I mean, technically, you could make any TV vertical. I think yeah, you, you can just, like switch. I mean, maybe not like regular TV. I don't know that I want watching that, a sports though. game in vertical orientation or a movie. Yeah, I mean, we put out little short movies every week, Charlie. That's in vertical orientation. I know. I think it's dumb. I've always found it to be dumb. What's dumb? I find it to be a more pleasant viewing experience wide. I mean, that's why movies are wide, but it also is not as ergonomical to hold in your hand for a phone. So that's it. So then the answer then is the TVs will never be turned the other way. Probably not. Okay. But would be would be interesting to see. I think um, I think it will be interesting. I mean, they've done it all. They've had the curved TVs. They got TVs that look like picture frames. Are those still Seems a deal? Seems like the next thing. Is the curved TV still a thing? I don't think so. I don't understand why a curved TV even exists. Miles, do you know that I've never bought a TV in my life? What do you mean? Never bought a TV. I know. What do you mean? 
How do you get TVs then? I've taken them from either the side of the road or my brother's house. Or Charlie always carries a wrench set with him just in case he's got to demount a TV. I've and demounted a lot of TVs, a lot of TVs, Miles. And then um, uh, another place, um, one place I moved into had a projector screen on the ceiling. It was like from the late 90s or early 2000s. It's an old one, but it still works. It overheats. <laughs> There's no way you got that thing going. Yeah, Because I feel like a projector is a lot of setup and I don't you don't. No, no, no. It. Already set up. Oh, yeah. I could mount it. Don't get me wrong. I'm a good mounter. But when it comes to the um, Charlie Barron's intricacies, constantly mounting and demounting yeah. over and over again. Thank you. When it comes to the intricacies of setting up with a remote, I, f- I get so frustrated. That's what I mean. That's kind of what I was. Yeah. If that thing ever has a bug in it, you are going to have to call someone. I just I think I'm just going to get a new one at that point. Yeah. Go I'm over to your parents' house. Yeah, they gotta have a downstairs TV. You can just demount and sneak out the back. They do actually. There you go. Well, well, Charlie, Miles, should we take some callers today, pal? I think we should. Um, I'm gonna do my best not to get caught watching the Chive TV. You've been doing today. it this whole time. I know. I gotta face a different way, but yeah. Uh, yeah, let's take some callers. Let's do it. Hey, welcome to the Belly Dub Podcast. Who do we have the pleasure of chit chatting with today? Hi, my name's Ryan. I'm in work right now, so if you guys cannot hear me, I'm terribly sorry. No, we hear you. I'm perfect. on my lunch. We hear you fine, Ryan. What are you having for lunch? Oh uh, well, I just picked up some gas station pizza, you know, down the road. That's about it. Yeah, that's good what for you. What flavor you get? Three meat or breakfast pizza? Oh, uh, today I just picked up some pepperoni and bacon. Oh. Okay. Okay. Little so, meat guy. I like much. it. Pep yeah. and bake. Well, why don't you belly up to the bar oh, with yeah. us? Tell us what's on your mind on your lunch break. So, uh, you know, last last uh, Friday night, I went out to the bar with my buddies, and I bellied up to the bar, and there happened to be this girl at the bar that I met. And, uh, you know, she was a really nice girl and all, and, I, you know, I got her number and everything. But what I mean, this girl was something insane. I don't know what the fuck that means. So we were talking. She goes to college, and uh, she was doing a pit crew for Bristol. She goes to a trade school, and she wants to do high performance. And I'm like, that's kind of badass. She works at a dealership, basically like a you know man. And then uh, her friend brought her a beer, and uh, I watched her down this beer in one go, and I had no idea what the fuck to think. Wow. My friend was beside me, and. Uh, our jaws dropped as I walked into the I said, I got to go to the bathroom. Walked so, into the bathroom, and my, my buddy goes, I think you're in love. I said, I don't know what the fuck to think, dude. So so what's the problem? Yeah, this all sounds great. Um, <laughs> I know. It's great. That's the problem. Is uh, I've only been in one relationship before, and she was psycho. And this is my first time getting back into stuff, and I don't know how I should come up out of this because she's like me, but I don't know how to ask people out. <laughs> well, you have her number, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, you call her and you say, hey, you want to go out with me? And then you pick a day and a place. <laughs> and then you're that. That's pretty Wait, much it. I got, I got that idea down. But like, what would we do? Like, you know, she she does pit crew stuff. I, you know, I don't watch NASCAR. I'm not the, I'm not like this in NASCAR. I'm just not a, Watching cars go in a circle ain't my kind of thing. Well, first of all, what you do is and you just she, go to dinner, and then you just ask her about all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, ask and listen, and don't feel like you have to talk about yourself. You are a journalist at this point. You yeah. are just gaining information. And well, don't we, forget it. Remember it. Take yeah. note. Because she'll remember if she told all you right. something, you ask her again. Trust me, I know. I forget a lot of stuff. <laughs> What's what, how old are yeah, you? Yeah, I've kind of realized that watching some of the shows. I'm 21. Oh, you're 21. Okay. How old is she? Yeah, she is 23. Okay. So it seems like the concern is is she's kind of a badass, right? Yeah. Are you a little yeah. bit worried that uh, she's going to? 
what I would say, threaten your manhood a little bit? Is that kind of the vibes I'm getting? Just a, yeah, I mean, she works at a BMW dealership. I used to be a mechanic. I used to work at a Subaru dealer. But, like, you know, I'm a machinist now. And she, she still works on cars. I don't do that stuff anymore. But well, yeah, I, I feel s- like she would take away my... Uh, she seems more manly. I feel like she could out-chug me, like, beat me in a shotgun. And I don't like that. I feel... Like my man has been taken. <laughs> yeah, Good I got that's reasonable. But I will let me give you a little reassurance. Most fellas have not worked in a car shop at all. Most fellas have, do not know anything about being a mechanic. Most fellas um, are not a machinist, you know. And this all seems to be well within her area of interest. So I think you're already uh, you're already shooting from an, a place of advantage, and. You got her number. Don't forget that. She wouldn't have just given you her number if she was completely uninterested. Unless you call that number and it's just a phone sex line, then you know that she gave you a fake number. And uh, have you tried calling the number yet? Um, I've been texting. We've been texting on it. And uh, oh, okay. Read us, the, read us read us the, the text. Day, she, so she texted me saying, "Hey, uh, I'm gonna give her a name of a. Uh, we'll go with B." Okay. And uh, she texted me, and she's like, the next day, she's like, hey, I uh, had a good time last night. I don't remember leaving the bar, so that's where, like, I don't know some of the stuff that I said. don't remember leaving the bar. I remember just waking up, looking at my phone, and saw she texted, and she asked me if I wanted to go to a rodeo the next night. And I said, um, yeah, okay, sure. So I'll go to the, we went to the rodeo. You guys and, already um, went on your first day. Let me finish, let me finish. Uh, not really a date. It was a bunch of group. It was a group of people. And um, she, her friends were riding bulls, and you know they asked me. I've never ridden a bull. I don't see myself riding a bull, but I got asked to ride one, and I didn't. I turned it down, and I felt like, well, that was a that was a bad move. And we 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 talked a little bit Sunday, and we haven't really talked much today. Oh, wait, was it a real bull or a mechanical bull? Real bull. Oh, Real fuck, dude, you made the right choice. Yeah. What do you, what, you want to be paralyzed? Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. the craziest. You know, yeah. I all, will sacrifice all my manhood if it means that I don't got to get on a bull. Yeah, that's one of the craziest things you can do. Did she ride the bull? No, no. No, that's okay. not the reason, man. That That's one. Of, don't get on a bull. Well, I think it's also she seems like she's put herself out there and you haven't really made a strong move. So she might be getting a little disinterested. Yeah, you got to. I mean, this gal's got a lot of suitors, you know, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I think the other thing. Yeah. I, I think, mean, I think the other thing, too, is she seems very direct. She Which does. is great for you. So you oh, yeah. just got to match her directness and just ask her out. Yeah, you haven't. What have you said since the rodeo? Um, well, I asked her how her day at work was yesterday. And uh, I asked her if she wanted to go out and get a drink oh. later this week, like on, on a Thursday. Yeah. I'm and um, but like I can only talk to girls when I'm drunk. That's the issue. Okay. I have bad confrontation issues. That's a separate issue. So. We'll get to that in a second. But first issue, did she reply to the texts? Um, short answers, but yeah. Well, what's the long answer? No, she's he gave well, like you he know, gave him short answers. Just, oh, she gave short yeah. answers. Yeah. So did she say yeah. yes or no to the date? She said she'll let me know. Oh, oh man. man. Oof. Yeah. Oofity 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 oof. Yeah. Okay. I think you you know, she may come around and want to go get that drink, but I think it might sound you need to be prepared that uh you guys are just friends. Here's the bigger issue. Okay. Here's the bigger issue though. The fact that you can only talk to girls when you're drunk. You're gonna have to get over that. You gotta work on your <clears throat> you gotta work on yourself right now. You gotta forget about her. There's gonna be there's a million of her. Well, maybe a hundred. Uh there's a hundred of her. You find one. Good luck finding another. Um but you gotta work on yourself so you're more like ready to rock and roll here. Cause if you're getting blackout at the bar, you know, that can work the first time. Maybe get a number, maybe thought it was fun, but you know, you can't rely on booze to talk to women. Otherwise you're just gonna be uh well, you're not I gonna think, have a liver. I think what he needs to do is start uh narrowing his focus on who he's looking for. 
So if you're not great at chit chat and small talk when you're sober, I think you just got to find a gal who won't shut up. You got to find a gal that literally just talks and talks and talks, and then you don't even have to worry about talking. Well, yeah, that's a different direction to go. It. Yeah, but I mean, like, so you know, if this is anything about my past relationship life, is um, so like I said, my ex girlfriend is very psychotic. Only one relationship. Everyone warned me not to like go after her, but you know, a bunch of red flags are there. But I'm colorblind. Like, I don't see red or green. Like, I remember that Ethan kid that came in saying all of his red flags turned to green flags. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see the flags in general. So um, I just go in blindly half the time. Okay. And. Well, let's kind of let's first talk that. about your last relationship, because I think he's a little bit scarred. Yeah. From that. I what think- you say? She's psychotic. What made her psychotic? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, where do I get started? All right, so we'll get started on the part of well, one, she treated her parents very poorly. You know, I got the big no, no in my my book. Treating her parents bad. How so? But uh, she would back talk her parents, argue with them all the time. Wouldn't help them. I was the one helping her parents for her instead of her doing it. Uh, she treated me very poorly, like very down on mental health kind of person. Like beat your mental health down. <laughs> Yeah, and I just sat there and took it because I know. I'm so we, nice of a give, guy. Give I don't us say some, no. Give us some examples. We need examples here. Oh, I, okay. So uh, back when, right before I was going to graduate high school, we were dating, and uh, I was saying how I wasn't happy with, I said I wanted to get into the gym and start looking better. And she was like, yeah, good. She goes, you're starting to look fat. She goes, I don't want to be with a fat guy. And then I started going into the gym. But, like, you know, you got to, like, beat my – personality down for me to go do stuff like that okay so and then a bit of a bully a little bit of a bully okay yes Give very me. very controlling would she jealous then, uh, would she get jealous yeah i wasn't allowed to talk to any females not not one well not no even, wonder you're bad at talking to women uh, i wasn't allowed to for three years <laughs> well good god i can't believe you stayed in that nightmare for three years but you did. I think, you know, you got to get yeah. out there. You got to start talking to um, women, not just women you're interested in, but just women in general. You know, she's she really puts you in a controlling spot. Yeah, maybe join a women's book club. Just get comfortable with talking to women. There you go. Okay. Miles is just making yeah. fun of okay. my suggestion. No, I I'm saying I'm, I'm adding on to that. That's a good idea. Do you think he's going to be allowed in a women's book club? Maybe go to the nail salon, uh, just hang out there, get your nails done, get a pedicure, manicure, and just chit chat with the ladies there. You could do that. I was thinking of going to the gas station. Where do you live? Um, I live in four, I live in a village. It's called the Forest, Ohio. I have, I have a population of a thousand people. I know about everyone here. So. Okay. Well. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe you know I would just start. I would start getting going in the art of small talk. You know, the art of just say asking people anybody how their day is going, ask them yeah. one more follow up question. Start the. It's a great Midwest art of chit chatting, actually. Charlie, Miles, why, why don't you give me the top three things? Why don't you give me the top three tactics? For small talk. For small talk. Well, I think first things first, you got to listen. Always be listening and kind of keep a a, a real short memory of the conversation because you're going to have a lot of them. So it's not in the ear, out the out the other. It's in one ear, kind of absorb it for a bit and then dump it because you're going to have a lot of information if you're a chit chatty type person. Yep. Ask them their name. Ask them where they're from. And then third question is a wild card. So do you like to fish or what do you do for fun? You know, and then from there on that one, you can really build a conversation. So if the name doesn't strike anything up, if the location, if you don't know anything about the location, the third one is, do you like to blank or what else do you like to do for fun? That way you suggest what you like to do for fun and wondering if they do that as well. And then if they don't, do the thing that you also like, give them an option on what else they can say and then build off that. Like, Oh, I've never heard about that. Tell me more and all, you know, tell me more, ask them more and then just keep listening and and the conversation will flow from there. Yeah. And I think even before you get into all that, Charlie, Mm -hmm. the number one thing you should be bringing up is the weather. weather. 
The weather. I mean, yeah. The weather. That, yep, that's always a big one. Especially yeah. In Ohio. There's always something to say, right? Yeah, a little bit chillier out today. Yeah. Not so bad out here. You yeah. know, I'll try it with Miles. Hey, uh, I'll, you know what? I'll try. I'll try it with the, with this fellow. Watch this. Hey, uh, so what's your name? You out there, guy with the girl. What's your name? Is he gone? I don't know. I think he's gone. I think oh, that can work. Oh, it's you. Yeah, I'm pretending like we just met. I was confused. Yeah, I was confused too. That's all um, right. It doesn't matter. You get it. <laughs> yeah. Charlie, right, let's do it. All right. All right. Ah, hey, how man. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. Yeah. Weather out there. I know. It's hey. kind of nuts. At least it's not snowing this week like right? it was last week. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. This place up here. It looks like the moon when it snows a lot here. Yeah, it gets super cold. It, yeah, it does. Oh. I'll tell you what, though. I think we're going to have a few more days of some warmer weather before are it we? gets cold. So. Oh, you know, that'll give me time to go get the gutters cleaned. That is true. Have and you it- cleaned your gutters? <laughs> Uh, I haven't. I got to do that as well. But I also need to go find my winter jacket somewhere in the basement. Oh, the big (laughs) coat. Hey, you know what I like? When I put the big coat on and I find five dollars in the pocket, I'm like, "That's the bank. That's the only bank account you can trust yeah, these one days." One time, I uh, found five dollars and a winning scratch-off ticket. I forgot to. Come on. Yeah. So. Did it? Was it expired? Oh yeah, seven bucks. Oh, dude. Congratulations. Yeah. Hey, what's your name? Uh, Miles. Will you go out with me? Yeah. See, and that's how it's done. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right. I mean, that gives me a lot more confidence, honestly. Okay. I really think. I but, think he uh, it gives him a lot more confidence. He's got to go back to work. Yeah. You Are we holding you up? You got to go back to work? Yeah. Uh, no, you're good. My boss don't really care. <laughs> what, you're at the machine shop? My boss is my, my boss. Is, yeah, I'm inside the shop, but my boss is my uncle, and he kind of don't really care. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. We're, uh, we're on our slope. We're we're in a slow period right now, so we kind of. What what what's the weather? Weird where what's, we're at. what's the weather like in Ohio today? Uh, so you know, last week it was snowing for a little bit and oh. then rain. And it's been sunny these past couple of days, but it's like it's in the perfect like fifties, like the like right when it's going from summer to fall, the perfect like fifty to sixty degree weather. You know? Yeah, like where I honest, can wear a hoodie I, in the morning and then have. Yeah, it's I, a lot better. I, I, My I, favorite. Real good. See, you got the small yeah. talk down right there. You did. You couldn't let I Miles so. have a. It's a lot easier talking to guys, though. Well, just pretend girls are guys. You know, just <laughs> we, pretend. We're doing that already, anyway. It, I just days, asked so. Miles out. <laughs> Do you think that was easy for me for me to ask Miles out? No, it was very difficult. And you can rise to the occasion too. Just imagine these gals are fellas. Say, All right. Just build your imagination. And again, try it first with girls that you're not interested in. That'll get you used to the process. Yeah, ask some gal at the book club out. Yeah, get some gals yeah, that are. You know, I'm with a. Get some gals that are actually your friends. Get some gals in the book club. Yeah. yeah. Find some gals that are actually friends, and they will help you. They will set you up with their friends. You'll learn how to talk to women. It's going to be good for you, and you're already a great conversationalist. Well, you're good, but you're going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You get back to work. You finish that pizza, and... Uh, Tell your uncle we say hi. Yes. Do that. Will do, and you guys watch out for deer now, all right? All right, will pal. Do. Be good. Ah, uh, twin. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know why he called in. <laughs> After all that, I don't. Well, he doesn't he want asked, to talk he to asked women. How to ask someone out, and then he just revealed that and he, he asked already asked her out. out. Well, I think he's bummed out, dude, because he doesn't think he did it right. Because now she's she's definitely giving him the Heisman. Yeah, she's definitely. You know, that was pretty good. Yeah, wasn't it? In That's the old Heisman. <sighs> Um, a little too much forward lean, I think. You gotta stand taller when you okay. do it. 
No, well, then it's a yoga now, stretch. No, now it looks like you're doing ballet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can do ballet, your, Miles. He's got to go into your chest. Oh, yeah. Oh, that one's actually pretty good, Charlie. Pretty sweet. Huh? Pretty yeah. sweet. Um, when was the last Wisconsin Heisman winner? Ron Dane. Nice. So what's up, baby? All right. Right? Or was Charlie. it right after? Was it? Um, no, it was Ron Dane. I think in 2011, there was someone. Real good. Let's Real take good. another Okay, caller. Miles, you ask a question, you don't care. Fine. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Hello? Who are we talking to? Hey, this is Sheena. Shayna. Did I say that right? No, it's Sheena. So it's like Sheena Easton. Sheena. Sheena. Got it. Hey, Sheena. Where are you calling in from? Hey, guys. I'm calling in from Altura, Minnesota. Okay, a little Minnesota. So it's gal. right by, it's right in between, yeah, right in between Rochester and Winona. Oh, okay, well, Altera. We're on the uh, west side of the state in Glendon, Minnesota today. Yeah. So Come on s- by, Sheena. Same state, different side. Well, why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. So I kind of wanted your guys' opinions on holiday pajamas and taking Christmas photos. Okay. What about it? So I just recently bought me and my fiance holiday PJs, and he was reluctant to put them on. (laughs) As he should be. And was more reluctant to take photos. (laughs) I know, but he looks adorable in them. Okay. What kind of pajamas? I don't are know these? a single guy that wakes up in the morning lo- trying to look adorable. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. He's not a teddy bear. He's a big, <laughs> grown, masculine man that's going to yeah, try gonna... and fix your uh, your uh, garbage disposal and probably make it worse and have to call a professional. But that's that's the mindset he's in, you know. Well, I know, but no, I got him just like regular like flannel green pajamas from target oh my gosh and a matching holiday mug (laughs) oh my god you really did it didn't you so Mm -hmm. this is now more of a question from me to all of the females out there that are doing exactly what you are saying why why do we need to do this And it makes for cute holiday like family pictures. So what's wrong with just wearing normal clothes and taking photos? Well, that was a whole other conversation when we did our engagement photos. Did you guys not wear clothes for your engagement photos? No, we did. We had matching outfits for those two. Oh God. So he is he already gave you one, Sheena. Okay. He gave you one. So, <laughs> Sheena, I, I'm starting to build in my head kind of uh, what kind of gal you are, just from what you've told us so far. Miles, what, do you, what do you do for a living? I sell luxury cars. No shit. Really, Sheena? Well, may, hey, That's now good. I see why yep. I did the match and stuff. Did you, get him a, did you get him a nice car? Does he have a nice car? You give him a deal on something? Uh, no, he bought his own car from a different dealership. What? <laughs> it's the most dude thing I've ever oh, heard. Smart guy. I mean, it doesn't need to be buying a luxury rig. It just needs to get him from point A to point B. That's you know? true. What kind of, what, do you think you yeah, can, no. does he like cars or no? Yeah, he's a car guy. Like so, he's got his little um, Subaru car and then he's got a big Dodge truck. I don't know. He went to school to be an auto mechanic. Nice. Huh. So you sell luxury cars. What do you like to do for fun? Yep. Um, I kind of just like to like sit around and watch Animal Planet <laughs> for fun. I'm going to be honest. Or hang out with my cat. When we started this conversation, I had an image in my head of who you are as a human. And every single minute that this goes by, I have to start over. Yeah. I... You sell luxury cars, but you love Animal Planet. You love posted Instagram photos. I'm and Target. I'm all over the place. Um, could I suggest some cooler options for a Christmas card? Sheena? Yes, are I will we, be open to suggestions. You're receptive. Okay. 
Um, first of all, is it just the two of you? Yep. So it's the two of us, and then my two cats will have matching bandanas too. God, that's funny. Um, so you love Animal Planet. Might I suggest you guys get di- different animal pajamas? And then he could be like a. B- I even, tried that with he, Halloween, and he wouldn't. He doesn't. He wouldn't like, do it. He doesn't even like plaid pajamas. You think well, he's going to go for animal pajamas? I thought his issue was the fact that they were matching. I think his issue is is that he doesn't like to do anything. Is what it sounds like in terms of <laughs> cuteness. Also, if any cuteness is involved. Yeah, that's I true. think he's out. Sheena, you do realize if you send out that Christmas card, if you guys wearing matching pajamas, his friends are not going to let him hear the end of it. If Miles sent me a card of him and Anne in matching pajamas, I would bring it up at the beginning of every single bellied up podcast from now until forever. I just want to let you know that kind of like the divorce. Okay, yeah. Miles brings up the divorce every freaking episode. Thank you. It's exactly like that. And Sheena, why did you just have to bring that up? Okay. So yeah, you do understand what we're talking about here. And Sheena, yeah. l- let me tell you something. You ask him to do too many matching pictures of pajamas. Ooh, I don't know. What's going to happen, Charlie? That's what I said. I don't know. Well, I just, I chalk it up to, you know, the things you do for love. Like he's really big into the gym. So I will go to the gym with him and that's not my favorite thing to do. Uh And I like doing all the cute things and he hates doing the cute things. So therefore he gets stuck wearing bright green matching Christmas PJs. (laughs) She is. Oh, they're bright green. They're not even like a muted forest green. (laughs) <laughs> they yeah. look like the Grinch is what they look like. <laughs> I love how you weren't calling in for advice on this. You were just calling in to defend to br- it. To brag about how you get your husband to do <laughs> cute stuff. So, I mean, you got to figure it out. No, no, no. My, my, adv- my, my, my big question, though, is is how do I, as the female, obviously, in this relationship, compromise? Like, I make him wear cute Christmas things. So I guess my advice, like my question to you guys is like, what's something that you guys as guys would like for us girls to do in return after we stick you into those Christmas pajamas? I mean, um, make, uh, I believe you along. Make us dinner, uh, bring us beer, wash our clothes. I mean, all those are pretty good options. I, I'm doing his laundry right now. I think you guys got this figured out. You You both seem to understand the leverage part of marriage. Marriage is all about leverage and keeping score. I say this every time. You guys have a trade-off. He does the cute stuff. You go to the gym with him. You do his laundry, all that. And, I mean, what? seems like it's like a match made in heaven. Sheena, you're asking us what guys, generally speaking, want. But, you know, guys aren't really a monolith, nor are women. And then you're married to this fellow. What's his name? His name is, we're not married yet, but his name is Chance. Wow, you're not even married and he's doing this stuff. Yeah. Chance. Okay. Are you guys engaged? <laughs> yep. We got engaged in June and our wedding's in two years. Ah. Two years. Okay. Um, well, congratulations. Yeah, first, congrats. First off. Um, oh. Thank yeah. you. Well, what does Chance want more than anything in this world you know him pretty good you guys are engaged if you were to guess what would chance want more than anything in this world from you for me to shut up so he can play his video games wow (laughs) all right sounds like a good good guy to Ah. me seems like he's got his priorities he's he's big fans of both of you guys well, Chance. Oh, yeah. Actually, um, I got him You Betcha merch for Christmas. Hell, yeah. Wait, this Christmas or last Christmas? This Christmas. We didn't start dating until this year. Okay. Well, now you just gave it away, and he's going to know what he's getting for Christmas. Well, hang on now. Back the truck up. You guys are engaged, and you just started dating when? So our first date was January 19th of this year. And he proposed to me on June 19th. Is he in the military? 
No, he's a contractor. Okay, because that sounds like a military move to me. Yeah, you guys moved fast, real fast. Now, and not saying nothing about it, my my uh, my grandpa and my nana moved fast too. I think six months they knew, but man. That's really fast. So, you know, you feel good about it. Or is that why you guys have the two year engagement? No, we have the two year engagement so I can finish school. Gotcha. Now, I I will have to say he probably is kicking himself a little bit <laughs> because he hasn't even been with you for one holiday session. He didn't even know about the flannel pajamas when he proposed and I don't know. It's a good thing he proposed when he did because he might have been rethinking things after the flannel pajamas. Yeah, it's, you know, you got a flannel matching jammy shots is something that can really test a relationship, Sheena. So, you know. Oh, I know. Okay. All right. But you don't care. Well, I think it's cute. I'm like, and I've always wanted to do that, but all of my like ex boyfriends were sticks in the mud, or sticks in the mud, so mm. I couldn't do it. And I had also asked him before I bought them if he'd wear it, and he kind of didn't give me an answer, so I just went ahead and bought them. <laughs> I love how you're saying that your previous relationships were sticks in the mud and didn't want to do pajamas, and this guy also doesn't want to do the pajamas. <laughs> So you're saying you have a type is what you're saying. I did have a type until I met him. Okay. What makes him different? I mean, he's a good guy. Like, I don't know. He's not cheating on me or talking to other girls behind my back. Okay. That's a good start. <laughs> what else? <laughs> um... It. What else is there doing? Oh, he's got nice eyes and like in his family is really nice. His parents are super sweet. Uh, he's a power lifter, so he can lift big, heavy things. Okay. There yeah, we go. he's got a hot bod, huh? How does he yeah, is it is so he sounds like a pretty burly guy. Is the pajamas pretty skin tight on him or no? No, I think I bought him a size too big, so they were a little baggy on him. But yeah. like, he still looks good. Huh? Yeah, a little long, but still fits the shoulders. Smart. You just tuck in the pajama top. Yep. <laughs> so no, 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 I don't, no. He didn't tuck it in. Okay, you, so this is already you already took them. Well, I made him try them on. Oh. Okay. Where? God, is, I bet he hated that. <laughs> where is it's this? It's like when you go school <laughs> shopping as a kid, and you'd like. You'd act all shitty about it. You go in the fitting room <laughs> and then walk out with your arms by uh, your side and your shoulders down. They look fine, Mom. It, it fits go. fine. Can I take it off? Is that what happened? Oh, in a nutshell, yes. Because, like, I made them try them on, and then, like, I wanted to, like, before we get our, like, nice Christmas photos done, I just wanted to see how well they would photograph. Because if, like, the colors didn't look good on us, I was going <laughs> to get us new ones. So I did make him take one photo and I did it in like a video. Like I recorded us, like so I could screenshot it. Uh -huh. And the entire video is hilarious. He's, he's was just so grumpy about doing it. Can you send yeah, us that need, video? We need and that footage. Can you send that to us? Do you guys like on your Instagram page? Yeah. Just yeah. DM bellied up pod on yeah. Instagram and we got to see that footage. Yeah. Well, All right, let me. I gotta run it by him first, though. But yeah, no, oh, you come don't. On. You make the guy wear pajamas. I don't think you're running it by him. Um, so, <laughs> what's kind of funny? What would be funny is he acts all shitty about it, right? Doesn't want to take the photos, this and that. It would be funny if you like had to work a Saturday and he was at home playing video games and you came home early from work and he was gaming in the pajamas. <laughs> I think would be the ultimate. <laughs> Like he probably secretly like got him. He was shitty about it. Then got him on and was in his head kind of like, okay, these are like kind of comfy. I kind of don't mind them, but he can't backpedal out of it because he's got an image to uphold. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised you come home early from work on a day and he's just in the pajamas gaming. Where, where is the, that's what I'm waiting for. That's what I'm waiting for. Where is the image? The final image going to go? Oh yeah. That's 
It's on my Instagram. Do you guys want me to DM that to you too? Mm-hmm. It's on your Instagram. What's your Instagram? Um, Sheena Ray underscore twenty four. So for anyone listening, you should go to Sheena Gray underscore no, 20, Ray. Sheena Ray underscore twenty four. And just let the fella know how good he looks in those pajamas. Because I think maybe that's the way, because he sounds like he's in it for life. And I don't think you're going to stop the cute pajamas anytime soon. So maybe we need to make him feel better about wearing the pajamas by pumping him up a little bit. Everyone go tell him how sexy he looks in the pajamas. How do I spell Sheena? Um, okay, so it's S-H-E-E-N-A-R-A-E underscore 24. All right, here we go. Oh, She's private. Uh, you're private. I just followed you back. You got to accept me. All right, hang on, hang on. Oh, I'll tell you what, though, that All profile right, picture, he does look, he, it's a cute profile It is picture. cute. He looks like he's smitten by he, you, he, Sheena. But he also kind of looks like he hates every second of it. Yeah, there's, nah, it does Yeah, he? That, was, that was our engagement photo. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're looking for a dog sitter, or dog. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> that oh, I, is I, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That is so good. Uh, that is so good. Oh, oh, you guys are cute. You guys are cute. Oh, my God. You know, I think he likes After it. After seeing him now, though, <laughs> I understand why he doesn't want to take photos. <laughs> Every picture, he's just staring right into the camera. <laughs> Every he's picture. Just not, he, hasn't, he hasn't smiled in a single no. photo. Even this one where you're covering his eyes. Oh, my God. You guys are cute. Cute couple. Yeah. Uh, I think there's one engagement photo on there that he's smiling. Is there? Oh, this one he's drinking at the lake. He's got a half smile on. Yeah. So there we go. I feel like. Oh, well, okay. That that that's a, that's a beer smile. Yeah. yeah. He's always wearing the shirt that says junk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> I don't remember the whole story, but I think it's like an athletic wear brand or like something. Like he's super big into fitness. Dude, I love like, that he proposed. Miles, we've, we've talked about this. Dude, I love that he proposed. <laughs> we've talked to- about this because Dude, he- I love that he proposed to you well, in I- a cutoff shirt. That is awesome. It's a tank top. God. So okay, so the story behind that is when he first proposed, it was a Saturday night. We were drinking a bottle of wine, playing cards, and I dared him to do it. Oh, he's gonna hate me for this one. I dared him to do it. And he was like, nah, I don't know. And I was like, well, okay, I triple dog dare you and you're not going to back out of that. So he did. And then we ordered my official ring. <laughs> and then that picture, it was right after I got off work. So I ran home and changed and he was at the gym. So then we met here in Altura, like over by the playground, like where the really pretty sunset was. So he had just came from the gym. So he wore that shirt to the gym and that hat to the gym. Yeah, he's wearing a ball Basically cap. Basically switched out of his shorts, put jeans on. Yep, put jeans on, and then went and did that. I love This him. is this great. Awesome. And I made him do it six times to get that picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I think you guys are, are going to be fine. Yeah, you guys are perfect. You guys together. are going to be good. No longer concerned about the, the pajama shot. Hey, it sounds like he responds well to triple dog dares. So just triple dog dare him to take a photo in the pajamas. <laughs> Say that he won't do it, and then he will. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Anything you want, triple dog dare. I don't want to use up all of them, though, before we're married. That is yeah. true. Don't abuse that the triple dog smart. dare. Yeah. I think you'll have, to, you'll have to tell him that I say he looks cute in his green pajamas. By the way, this guy, there's zero chance in hell this guy's wearing a suit to your wedding. Unless it's unless the arms are cut oh, off. How, <laughs> how did he get the how did he magically get the sleeves back on the junk shirt? How many junk shirts does he have? <laughs> I've seen several different versions of it. He's got um so okay, so he's got the cutoff that he proposed in. He's got the t shirt with the photo of us with me in the green shirt. Yep. And then he's got a long sleeve shirt that he gave to me because it's too feminine on him. <laughs> oh my god. This guy is hilarious. I love it. Oh, well, well, you're you're taking a chance on chance, but uh, 
Not a huge chance. Oh, yeah, that's their wedding hashtag, too. Yeah. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to be the first one to think about that. Um, yeah, this is good. I mean, honestly, I think, is does Chance have a good sense of humor? Yeah, when we started dating, he said we're ODing. Like, officially dating, but he abbreviated it to be ODing. Oh, that's that funny. That is a classic, it's a classic Chance joke. Yeah. <laughs> if I know Chance like I think I do... That sounds just like him. <laughs> you should post a video of you guys trying on these jams. Well, once they're already on, preferably. Not don't do like a get ready. Well, no, I yeah. mean walking in I doubt they changed in front of the camera. <laughs> Miles. They probably got into him and then walked in frame. I'll tell you what, though, this green pajama photo, he I can tell he does squats. Yeah, he's got a nice ass. He's got what they would kids would call a dump truck. Yeah. <laughs> is that what he it does? Is? I call it a double wide trailer. Yeah. yeah. The double wide dump truck. Yikes. Um, is that what initially drew you to him? Yeah. What'd you like about him first? You know, obviously I went for his personality like he's. He's a pretty quiet, shy guy, and I'm pretty outgoing and energetic. That's good. So I like good somebody that's the complete opposite. Yin and yang. It is. Um, like I said, he's got really nice, pretty blue eyes. He's got a really sweet smile. And if we want to be more shallow, yeah, the muscles in the butt. Mm-hmm. Muscles in the butt. 100% the butt. The butt. You're a butt. You're a butt he's gal. He's your fiance. You can talk about him like a piece of meat all you want. Yeah. That's not shallow. Oh, I know my my coworkers do it too. Okay, so you're all about that butt, huh? Number one, or or arms, arms or butt? What goes first? Probably the arms, because I feel like it's like objectifying if I say like, "Oh, I like your butt over your arms." No, but it's not objectifying. Each their own guys. They're both a piece of meat on the fella. They're both objectifying, and by the way, we're okay with that as guys. We don't care. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, well, this was great. Yeah, we're very happy for you guys. Um, enjoy the the honeymoon phase. Enjoy planning the wedding. Enjoy uh, getting them to take more of these cute pictures. I can't wait to see what you come up what you come up with for him to wear on Easter. That's gonna be oh yeah, matching bunny ears maybe. No. No, we, we decided that we would only do like stupid, cute things like once a year. No. Oh, well, because he knew that I'd stick him in a bunny suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Smart guy. Well, do us a favor, Sheena. Tell Chance that we says hi. And we wish you guys the best of luck. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Yeah, and I'll um I'll send you guys over that uh that video too. Yeah, yeah. that footage. That would be great. Just, just try not to laugh too hard. He's a sweet guy. He just doesn't like the pajamas. We are very big Chance fans. Very big. See, you know, I'm with him. If, all right, if, all right, I'll if, let him know. if my wife tried to put me in matching pajamas for a photo op, it just wouldn't happen. So kudos to him for being a good sport about yeah. it because I am not. And the look on his face honestly says it all. It's kind of hilarious, the look on his face, you know? Of like you all smile, all smiles, and he's just staring at the camera. That's kind of a hilarious. I imagine picture. he's a lot like my dad. My dad doesn't smile for photos either, and then my mom gets mad at him, and then it just it goes from like from like this. I know this is a great radio, but he's like this to <laughs> just like the very ends of his mouth curled up, and that's it. <coughs> Maybe his eyebrows go up a little bit. That's oh yeah, it. that's how. Yeah, that's how some of his photos are, too. So I, that's why I told him for the wedding. He has to smile for at least three photos at the wedding. <laughs> you gave him you should have started with a higher number, and then he would have negotiated yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's great. You guys make a great team. I sell cars for a living. I know how to negotiate. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you guys do, too. Oh, thank you. You guys are you. a great team. We love listening to you guys, and we're making dinner. Oh, that's Appreciate awesome. It. Well, you guys watch out for deer, okay? Well, we got cows here, but sure. Okay, watch out for them cows, too. Have a good one. All right, see you now. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well. Have you ever done a matching pajamas photo with anyone? No. What about your family? Like, did your mom ever make you dress up in matching? You know what? Early, early on. We did. Yeah, we we one year I think did like an old navy American flag 
family photo. Oh, Do you God. remember those shirts? Yeah. Yeah. We did one of those. Um, but yeah. It's always a, a weird thing. Uh, you know. Yeah. I I don't really have much of an opinion. It's just that. Yeah. My stupid. family's just not a match. Let's put on matching clothes family. There are some families that do it, I feel like, all the time. Yeah. Every Christmas Every card. birthday, they get the Rick's 30, you know, exclamation point on the shirt. Everyone's got to wear them. But it's a sorority fraternity thing, too, I think. Yeah. You know? All right. Let's take another caller. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. It's about that time. Well, you probably still got a couple. Well, we both got a couple weeks left to buy Christmas presents because it's still a little early here. What is it? December 14th, you said. So we still got a couple weeks, but I, I've been eyeing down some tippy cow for all of my over 21 year old family members. Come on, dude. Wait, did you say you've been eyeing it down? I've been eyeing it up. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Well, what we a got, coincidence. We're eyeing it up and down then. Maybe we'll meet like. in the middle yeah. right on the tippy cow logo. Exactly. Charlie. Bang is that what you're going to get me for Christmas? This is your Christmas present. I will take 10 bottles of Tippy Cow. Well, consider it done. Boom. So, guys, if you're looking for a good gift, look no further. Someone who likes drinking a nice, creamy, delicious, alcoholic beverage, you got to go find some Tippy Cow, put it in the stocking. They're going to love it. Tip it on back with a Tippy Cow moo. Welcome to the Belly Hey, guys. Well, welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Who are we talking to? This is Joe from Georgia. Joe from Georgia. Well, belly on up to the bar. Joe, what the heck is on your mind, fella? So every year, me and my buddies go to this convention in Atlanta called Dragon Con. Bunch of people dressed up in costumes for four days. Hell of a party. And I have what I call my beer life vest. I bring it with me and I wear it from eight in the morning to all hours of night. I hold the 12 pack because Lord knows I am not paying seven to eight dollars for a can of beer anywhere. I wanted to know what y'all think is an acceptable amount of beer to drink at a convention as such as that. Okay. So this is like a, a comic con type of convention. Is that what you said? Yep. yep. Kind of like comic con. Comic con's a, like commercially run thing. This is run by fans, but yeah. it's, Dra- there were five hotels in downtown Atlanta. Dragon con, you said. So everybody dresses up as dragons? Dragon con. No, it's uh, anything really like uh, TV shows, movies. All kinds of stuff. Okay, what did and you... And they're, like, I dressed up one year. I've gone as, uh, what if Mario was a Jedi? Nice. And then I did what I call the... I built a set of Stormtrooper armor, but painted it to look like a Puma tracksuit. <laughs> so it was blue with uh, white, a- with uh, yellow accents, and like... then it had Puma sneakers on. It's like a stormtrooper in the mafia. And then, exactly. Uh, there's a very famous guy doing it called the hip hop stormtrooper. And I asked him if I could copy him. And he said, yeah, sure. Go for it. That's so I made one awesome. and broke that costume out a couple of times. And so a whole bunch of fun stuff going on. And also want to know if y'all wanted to come down one year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you think Charlie and I should dress up as? It's got to be a, a a yin and yang costume. It's got to be a paired one. What would we dress up as? A paired costume for, well, you know, you could always do a deer and a hunter. <laughs> or a deer and a cow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Deer and a cow. That'd be great. Uh, uh, Charlie, we already got um, the costumes. We do have the costumes. We might, we might do that. Hey, are, are, do you ever go to furry conventions? Is it true what they say happens there? Happens there? I don't go, but I have friends that do who tried to get me to go, and I'm like, yeah, no. But uh, I have heard rumors that can confirm that. What do people do at furry so, conventions? What goes on a furry con- Again, I don't know. But what have you heard? People tell me stories. 
Well, let's hear one. What's, well, hold on. What's really? I've heard that uh, there. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, let's hear a furry convention. I've heard story. there's uh, um, people walk around in giant furry costumes with uh, collars on, being led by people not in um, furry costumes and everything. But I don't want to give the furries a bad rap because I don't know too much about that world and. To be honest, don't want to. Hey, we, I've heard. we don't uh, we kink shame on this podcast. Yeah, this is this is a safe space. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. okay cool. Wow. Well, I, also, I was gonna say I was first gonna get a little upset at Charlie for assuming that because he likes to dress up like a Jedi that he's in the same pool as a as a furry convention and then you said your friends are furries so then i that went out the window so i was like nice was, I, I know that what was i'm doing with that was a fair enough assumption I, look if you like to dress up yeah it, it, it's it's a gateway drug the comic-con is a gateway drug for furry conventions okay i've been yeah. to comic-con i know you, you, so does that mean that you're next uh, going to a furry I convention I, yeah i i think furries god bless God bless. Whatever your thing is, yep. who am I to judge? So are you in a relationship exactly. at all? Exactly. Are you in a relationship at all? Uh, yes. I I am married uh, with two kids. Do you, does your wife go with you? Yes, she does. What does she dress as? Uh, she's done um, uh, Doctor Who... Uh, Chewbacca, uh, she's done Princess Leia, all kinds of stuff. We have a lot of fun with it. Okay, so, uh, the next question is going to be a little personal. Seems like you're a Jedi Star Wars family. You guys do a little role playing with your lightsaber at all or no? Yeah, and be honest now. Well, yeah. We do not role play with the lightsaber. We'll put it that way. Why not? Because we work very demanding jobs and we get really tired. But sometimes <laughs> we'll get a little frisk on the couch watching Star Wars. Okay. okay. All right. You yeah. guys should role play, hey, though. No, nothing, you know? nothing like uh, Luke Skywalker kissing his sister to get him really turned on <laughs> on the couch, you know? Uh, <laughs> Oh, it ain't the truth, sir. It ain't the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys should really role play, I think. You know, give yourselves a weekend to yourself. Okay. Send the kids to the grandparents. Yeah, and dust off that Princess Leia costume. And maybe Luke Skywalker costume. And maybe you guys switch it up. Maybe you wear the Princess Leia costume. She's a stormtrooper. You never know. But you, you kids have hey, some fun. Who, who? We, we will. We will. I, I think y'all should come down and walk around for four days in downtown Atlanta heat. Hell yeah. So, okay, I got a question about the whole convention thing here. Um, you say it okay. sounds like you do a lot of drinking at this. What is like, what's some of the... Uh, What's some of the weirdest stuff that goes on at a Dragon Con convention? So, unlike Comic Con that I said is corporate run, Dragon Con is all fan base, and there's a lot of things that go on behind closed doors that you don't hear about. One of the craziest things I've seen, uh, I went to an ABC party, anything but clothes. Yep. So as long as you're not wearing clothes, you can go. So um, my buddy was like, shit, let's go. I go, okay, let's figure out something to wear. He took the bubble wrap that I used to keep my arm, my Stormtrooper stuff, when I ship it and wrap that around his uh, bathing suit area and then got a cardboard sign from the CVS down the road and wrote costume loading and use a piece of painter tape to hold that over his head and that's how we went to the party. That's actually pretty that's awesome. Funny. <laughs> that's a great costume. It sounds like a great time. Miles and I should go to it. What did you wear yeah. to the anything but clothes party? Did you find yourself a leaf? Uh, I found a whole bunch of leaves and I went as a bush. Nice. I, I want to go and I just want to put a Pringles can over it. Hey, they, I mean, 
No harm, no foul, in my opinion. Yeah, that's true. Uh, a ladder in the middle of the road. So, what do you do for a living? I am a mechanical engineer. Okay. I uh, design my uh, the company I work for. We design large distribution centers. Nice. I love what you're doing yeah. in your free time. It's good for the mind. It's good for the yeah. soul. And oh, um, it's phenomenal. Then I kind of took after y'all. Uh, y'all don't need to. Y'all can cut this if you want. But I started a YouTube channel called Beer Time with Joe. And after listening to y'all, I brought it back. So I've been doing uh, YouTube stuff. I find that to be real fun too. Oh well, yeah, man! We'll have to and, go check uh, it out. Just, yeah, good for you. That's yeah. great. So back to let's uh, the final thing here, Charlie. Let's yeah. answer his original question about yeah. how much beer is too much beer, and I think that the limit doesn't exist. You guys are doing ABC parties at these cons. I don't think that uh, I don't think it matters how much you drink, right? No, and this being a, a fan run thing, I, you can always barter your beers for other things with other folks. True, you know the barter system so is strong I, at these events. I, I, there is, and I don't know if you've ever been to a convention like this, but they have um, at this convention. It's called the Cult of the Ribbon, and you get your ID badge when you check in, and you get that, and then people will hang you ribbons, and you put them on your um, your badge, and people try to collect as many ribbons. And so I usually trade beers for ribbons if I see somebody with a ribbon I want. That's sick. I love the ribbon thing at conventions. I love how you guys are doing it. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'll give you an idea of my baseline when I go there. Um, I usually, I'll get there by eight in the morning and I put my beer vest on and I will throw 12 cold ones in there right when I get there. And I refilled that vest three times in one day last year. Oh my gosh. And so that's the kind of drink that's the kind of drink that I deal with up there. That's totally acceptable. I I mean, if I'm being honest, I I don't think I'll ever go to a convention such as this. I hate to break it to you. But if I did have to go, uh, I think I would have to be thirty six beers deep as well. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There you go. Uh, if I'm in town, yeah, I would go it's, to it's it. It's a lot of fun. I don't even like to dress up for Halloween. Then, I just don't think, only time I'll dress up <laughs> is for the internet, you know? Well, it, it, For well, millions of people to see. Yeah. yeah. If somebody laid out a costume <laughs> for you and you like the costume, it's just the idea of getting a costume, yeah, right? All, yeah, too much work. I right. Think, that's yeah. that's yeah. my issue. So, if I, I, Well, I'll try and convince Miles to come down for Dragon Con. How does that sound? Perfect. I got a bar recommendation for y'all, so I'd like it. Yeah, let's hear it. So my dad's from Wisconsin, from Lancaster, uh, right up uh, around Platteville, down in the uh, down by the Mississippi, down there in the corner, uh, bottom left corner of Wisconsin. And in Lancaster, there's a bar called Zippy's Brass Rail. You all should go check it out. Really small. I think there's a pot. That town has a population of 4,000. So that sounds I think like you have spot. a good old time. In the, Zippy's yeah, Brass history. Rail. Z- Zippy. Yep. And in Lancaster, Wisconsin. Lancaster. Folks, go check out Zippy's Brass Rail. It's a great Lancaster. name for a bar. It really is. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Well, thanks for the shout out there. I, I, I might have done some. Might have done some drinking there in my time. No, you don't drink that yeah, much. There's no on. way. <laughs> come on now. <laughs> oh, All right, well, man. Well, we appreciate you. Going, yeah. But it was, uh, yeah, it's about that time. It was a pleasure talking to y'all. And tell y'all, tell your folks to say hi. All right. You watch oh, the deer down there. See you now. I, uh, great guy. Nice guy. guy. I don't get it. I don't get the the con. Like I get it, but I don't think I'll ever be at one. Yeah. I was I was kind of hoping I had a joke lined up 
for when I asked him if he was in a relationship, he said no. And I was said, well, yeah, go figure. But yeah, well, he found one. And a lot of those guys, there's a lot of a lot of women are into them, too. Yeah. From what I've seen, there's there's a whole new world, really. A whole fantastic point of view. Yeah. Pot for every lid, Miles. Mm hmm. Well, that does it for us on another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. We'll have to leave it there. I hope you all have a safe and wonderful week, and you do watch out for the deer. They are out and about and humping on the streets. Miles, would you like to say anything to our audience before departing? <laughs> humping on the streets, like much like a furry convention. Much like a furry convention. In fact, well, never mind. Guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to tip, tip your, your bartender. bartender. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.